The city of Asheville was hit harder than I think anyone ever expected, more than anyone in the nation ever believed. The amount of flood rise, the amount of loss of life, the amount of loss of property. How do we get eyes on? You're dealing with rapidly moving water, terrain that was never supposed to be affected by a riverbed that expelled its way. Drones very quickly became required, not an accessory for the response to this event. We weren't able to get to all of those locations with the docking stations that we had set up. We could barely get to one of them based on the extreme distance it had to go. We wanted to come in and basically either handle all of it ourselves or work with these guys to make sure that they got what they needed. So we came out to their locations, we helped install, we helped you know, get involved with the different people that we were working with. Uh, at that point in time, we were working closely with FEMA providing overwatch search and rescue operations and to pull any pilots away was kind of a non-starter. And Reese offered something that didn't require that. And it was essentially him coming out here with his team and putting docks in place. From the DFR perspective, when we're able to take a mobile dock and go out there and basically recalibrate the drone within a few seconds, 30 or 45 seconds, the drone will recalibrate. And then when you press go, the, the drone's on, it'll be out within a matter of 10 seconds. I can tell you now, uh, my son being a teenager, and his friends think this is the coolest thing I could be doing, so that's a win. We're on scene on Riverside Drive and you're clear to launch. When we were able to get our hands on the Dock 3 to really get some testing in, it was really quick on my particular side where I was like, wow, this mobile side is gonna be awesome. It will not take many long to realize uh, just the uniqueness of a Dock 3 and how it's differing from Dock 2 and Dock 1. Being a user of all three and having put a Dock 2 in the rear of a truck, I think before anyone else did, really allows us that opportunity to say why it changes things. And when you get the Dock 3 and you're able to very quickly get on scene, calibrate and fly, return to home and start charging in far less time than it takes the dock to. It provides a way to have a whole network set up, but then a mobile option that still integrates all the automation. It's gonna have a better flight time. It's gonna have a quieter sound so you don't bother people. There were calls that we had about concerns about looters, people that were going into these businesses that were hard for the vehicle to get to because of the mud that was, that was left behind. So we were able to utilize drones to provide overwatch to direct officers to where the looters were and also also to be able to track where the looters were going so that the officers could intervene with those looters and be able to uh, return property that they had taken. One of the most unique stories that has come just of recent was even during the storm, patrol police activities still occurred. Assault happened at one of the locations specific to where we had placed a dock. Uh, Operators were able to respond and launch that dock in under 30 seconds and able to find this individual who was fleeing on foot. They captured him less than a mile away uh, and ultimately stopped additional or what we would have believed to be additional assaults from occurring. We're going to place these not only in areas that are affected by the storm and start providing information that's specific to rescue efforts, now recovery efforts, but also start giving data back to private businesses, the city government, state government, DOT, parks, all of those locations were requesting information that now they know we can do. It was not feasible because of the amount of damage to actually get them to the areas they needed to see to truly know and understand the damage that we sustained, specifically to our water department. Um, the reservoir itself and where the amount of water is fed to city residents was significantly damaged. That area is, is a good 45 minute drive when there's not issues. So how could we in, ensure that we could show this information? So we utilized drone technology, we flew it and we showed them. While surveying one scene, they got to see a live view of another. 
That then came into play, not only because we had that data, but now we're rerunning those same routes and giving them an image now. What we learned through drone footage is that we had over 900 vehicles or vessels submerged within the riverways contained within the city of Asheville. Uh, that's a lot of debris contained within the river. I think when you do what we're doing, the goal would be to take miles of damage and destruction and be able to give that information over and over and over again on, on a daily basis. Well, we are very proud to be one of the first agencies in the nation to have the BV loss waiver of its type. The BV loss waiver allows us to utilize less pilots and more drones, essentially. It has allowed us, just in the short time that we've had it, to be able to map locations that we otherwise would have taken twice as long and or not been able to get to. Manning is an issue. And when you talk about docking locations, that changes the game plan. When you're able to take away the amount of people it takes to fly, when you can put the technology in place to do it for you, now I can put that in a mobile application that should change everybody's perspective on this usage. There's always some kind of initial response, but then continuing to get the data as time goes on, that's what we want to be able to provide them. And, and that's why this is such a great testing ground because it, we're, we're going to be here for years saying, hey, this is how this looks after this amount of time. When I first heard about drones coming into our city and our community, I was a little nervous about how uh, we would respond to that. It kind of feels like a big brother being watched all the time and sense of privacy being lost. So I was a little skeptical of the idea. My attitude now has shifted dramatically. Um, the hurricane made a big impact on that, just going into areas that were not secure and safe. Any agency that's looking to replicate the drone model that we have, I would engage stakeholders early on, engage the community early on, be transparent, clearly explain what the drone use is for, uh, what the law says we can use the drone for, be transparent about any policies that you have about drone deployment. Anytime that you can utilize technology to assess a dangerous situation, it is something that I think it's important for law enforcement to embrace. It's important that we can utilize the technology to keep officers safe and oftentimes put technology in dangerous circumstances or dangerous situations. That way it'll save an officer's life or a citizen's life. This isn't just Asheville's story, it's a blueprint, and we're just getting started. <laughs>